from those words of exaltation to continue in the faith and uh, the acknowledgement or the revelation that we must through much tribulation, not just tribulation, but much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. I want to preach from this subject. This is a suffering way. Amen. This is a suffering way. Glory to God. I told you we wouldn't get many amens on that. Father, bless us now as we preach the word in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a suffering way. If I heard this statement one time, Mother Turner, I heard it a thousand times back in the day. Your husband, my pastor, the founder of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, in my somewhat never-to-be-humble opinion, the greatest preacher who ever lived. If I heard him say one time, he said this a thousand times, that this is a suffering way. Well, the William Cromer, Deacon Marvin Cameron on the Tuesday night services and the Friday night pastoral services would remind us that this is a suffering way. Mother Hattie Williams, the late great Bishop L.B. Leo Bennett Davenport, the late Superintendent E.C. Cannon, and so many others. Our current, the current prelate of greater North Carolina, the Bishop Leroy Jackson Woolard, often declared that this is a suffering way. Amen. This is what these greats and so many others had to say about biblical Christianity. This is what they said. This is what they said about holiness. This is uh, what was said about our Christian sojourn here on this earth, that as believers, we are, to quote Peter, pilgrims and strangers, that this world is not our home and that this is for the believer a suffering way. Here's the key. Here's the kicker uh, with this statement. The statement in those days, I've never heard it spoken or heard it said or felt that it was meant to be a lament. was never ordered as a pejorative. Never. Never one time was it meant to engender sympathy upon those who made the statement. In fact, every time I heard a believer say that this is a suffering way it was a boast. Amen. It was an admonishing a word of encouragement and a word of warning at the same time. Let the new Christian know uh, that you're going to have to go through something. Are you praying with me? It was the acknowledgement or the acknowledging of the fact that this thing, biblical Christianity, that if you're going to walk with Jesus, that it's going to cost you something. 
Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Indeed, uh, they drove home and is still in my spirit. Isaiah 35 and verse 8 that says, and a highway shall be there and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness. Said, the unclean shall not pass over it but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, the travelers, though fools shall not err therein. Oh my, the, the uh, contextual interpretation of this um, passage deals with uh, the hundreds of miles of, of desert from the, that the exiles would walk back to Jerusalem. Amen. The, as they traveled back home, going back to Jerusalem from Babylonian exile, they were walking the highway, going back home, and it was the way of holiness. It was the return of the believers to the Father's house when Christ comes. It's a way to get to God. Uh, it is a highway. Amen. And the highway is called, it's not 540. It's not 40 east nor west. It's not I-95. It's holiness. Amen. And said on this highway, you got to pay a toll. You got, you got to pay. It's not for the unclean. Amen. But it's easy to walk, see, because um, uh, even the simple won't get lost on their way home if they can just get on uh, H, holiness, I, holiness, whatever you want to call that highway if you get on the road and stay on the road You'll make it. God bless Pastor and First Lady Words. So good to see you this morning. Say amen. amen. Yes, we were made to feel at the time that we were part of something special. Holiness. I think that's why I stayed saved. I think that's what kept me. The Christian thought today and the thought that, uh, that prevailed just 30 years ago is very different. We envy the world too much for me, my personal taste. We want to be too much like them. We're looking over at the world and getting all of our statements from the world, our dress code from the world, bringing in the worldly music, worldly, 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 world. We studied today that one of the reasons God destroyed the temple was that it was idolatry. They let, they let all of the nations, the Zidonians, uh, uh, the people from uh, Tyre, Zidon, and different places, let them bring in their false religions and set their false gods and their false images up in the temple. And when you bring in false gods and false images and false things and put them in the temple of God, the next thing you know, God writes Ichabod in the temple. So by the time Nebuchadnezzar came and destroyed the temple, the temple had already been destroyed by the wickedness that they had allowed to take place in the temple. In the churches now, you're hard pressed to go to a church and find a cross. I don't know what that's all about. I was somewhere preaching the other day, and I thought that there was a cross, and then said while I was preaching, preacher, they've taken the crosses out of the church, and looked around, and lo and behold, there wasn't a cross in that one. What's that all about? The club don't try to fool you. The NFL don't try to fool you. You don't go to a football game and think you're looking at a basketball court. You don't go to a basketball game and you fool and think, what, what are they playing, lacrosse? No, that's basketball. Everything says basketball. 
Everything says uh, football. Everything says baseball. Oh, you, you attend church now, and church says everything. That's, that's the problem. There's no identity. Our churches wasn't as big as this church. We didn't raise the money then as we do now. Black folk have better jobs. We do better financially. But when it come down to being proud of being saved. Um, proud of being a Christian. I'm, and I, this is not nostalgia. This is not gleefully looking back at the past. I lived this. There's, there's no comparison. Um, we didn't have a youth department president. We had Sunshine Band, YPWW, Sunday School, that so and so, that wasn't for men. Um, um, in those days, and, and I'm not criticizing any of these things that we have now, we didn't have praise teams. We had devotional leaders, and none of them were trained. You just randomly pick out two people. Y'all lead devotion tonight. And, and, and without trained singers, and without a rehearsal. Woo! Simple, have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Captured the imagination of a 16 year old athlete. It kept me in church. Without all of the helps that we have now. And, uh, and we were proud to be a part of holiness. And in those days, holiness didn't allow uh, for, praise the Lord, uh, the fraternities and the sororities and the masons and the eastern stars wasn't a part of holiness. You had to come out of all those things to be in the holiness church. I'm making you uncomfortable now, aren't I? Amen. This passage was driven deep. And I'll tell you another passage that was driven deep into our minds and our hearts. Uh, 2 Timothy 3 and 12 says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That if you're going to live this with living this comes a measure of suffering. Matter of fact, everything is flipped now. Today, if you're living this and you suffer, that's a sign to many that you have a lack of faith. There must be something wrong with your faith if you're sick. There must be something wrong with your faith if your money is funny and your change is strange. There must be something wrong with your faith if you're going through something. That's, this is today's thinking. But back then, if you were saved and nothing went wrong, you wonder, God, am I living right? Where are you, Lord? Am I walking this thing? It's flipped. It's flipped. And this flip is not good. First Peter chapter 5, verse 9 says, Who resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions that are accomplished in you, in your brethren, that are in the world. The same afflictions that are accomplished in you are accomplished in your brethren that is, that's in the world. In other words, you know that you're not the only one going through. You know that this is par for the course. Are you praying for me today? 
Let me show you something. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, the Bible says this. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, verse um, 28 and down, then Peter began to say unto him, Peter said to Jesus, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that has, that has left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels, but that he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses, brethren, sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands with persecutions. And in the world to come, eternal life. With, with, some of you softies out there, with persecutions. It's a part of it. Praise the Lord. I'm preaching to you right now. Jesus said in John's gospel chapter 16 and verse 33, he says, these words have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. He says this and he says it quite clear in the world you shall have tribulation. But then he says, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. All or most of these doctrinal truths cease to be taught. I remember see, when you've been saved a little while and you know uh, some folk they've been saved a long time but they had a funny salvation. They had one of those salvations that they've been saved uh, 10 and 20 years but they spent 14 of them in the world but they counted all. But some of us got saved and was in the church the whole time. So we, we saw the trends. We, we, we saw the, the, the rise of the PTL clubs. We saw the rise of the 700 club. We saw the rise of the charismatic movement. And we saw the rise of the word of faith movement. We, we saw the rise in popularity of those preachers who began to preach and say things like, Christ died and suffered for us. He don't want us to suffer for him. Why, why am I going to suffer? Jesus did all the suffering. He suffered so I don't have to suffer. All of a sudden we heard, we saw the rise of believers claiming that they were walking in supernatural health. And they have supernatural faith. And they're entitled to every jet, every convenience, every mansion, every palace. And that if you walk in faith and you serve the Lord, you can have these things also. They did to biblical Christianity what, uh, the, uh, what they did to uh, the doctrine of uh, reincarnation. See, Buddhism and those doctrines that pr promote that kind of stuff never would have caught on in America had they not changed it. Because see, when the Buddhists first came over, uh, they, 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 and they began to teach uh, a reincarnation, Americans didn't like it. Because the original reincarnation doctrine was, you come back as a cow. Or a worm. Or, or, or some inferior animal. And Americans said, oh no. Oh, no, I'm not looking forward to coming back here as a dog. That, that has grandma right there running across the yard. She came back. Oh, no. That didn't catch on. So you know what they did? They, you know what they did? And, and, they, and this is, these are the same religions that have brought in um, cremation, yoga, and all these other things. So I've been in the church since 1977, and I've been saved, so I've, I've seen things. The, what they did to make it palatable and uh, attractive is they changed it. And said, oh, no, you can come back um, 
and, and your next life, you can come back and be a king. And then they, they come back again, I don't know, and be a queen. And so after they changed it, people fell for it. Churches, people began to leave holiness churches and sound churches when they heard and saw the flash and dash of some of these new movements. Movements that they did not require that you live anything. Easy believism. The charismatic movement. The charisma, free gift. Free. That means it's free. It, 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 it implies what it says. You don't you have to live it. You don't have to walk it. You don't have to talk it. It's free. Then they, then they begin to advertise. Come over to our church where we don't have a bunch of do's and don'ts, a bunch of thou shalt and a bunch of thou shalt not. Well, where did we get our thou shalt and our thou shalt not? We got them out of the Bible. And the last time I checked, they're still there. They're still in the Bible. But then as they began to promote this new style of Christianity, a new style that fills your life with material possessions. I remember, I remember, I was pastoring in Raleigh as I heard preachers on the Christian radio stations uh, say, listen, I'm not wasting my time preaching about my slice of the pie in the sky. I want mine now. And folk began to, de to demand their now. I'm not worried about going to heaven. Heaven will take care of itself. I want mine now. And then, so then, the proof of our salvation became the very thing that the Bible says shouldn't be the proof. The Bible teaches that we are not to suppose gain as godliness. The size of your car or the cost of that car is no indication to your spiritualness. It does not speak to where you are in God. And yet, that is exactly what was done. There's nothing wrong with driving a nice car. I thank God for my car. But the car doesn't speak to where I stand. In Jesus, I don't assume that because my car may be larger than your car, that, that then that means I'm closer to God than you are. I don't think that because I may be able, or that, that because you may be able to give uh, 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 more money than I can give, that that means you're closer to, to the Lord than me. It just it just means that you can do it and I can't. It means that I can drive the car and and, and you either can't or don't even want to. Don't care about those things. It has no bearing, but it became that. You know I'm preaching the truth. It became that. It became a measure of houses. You measured your place in God by the square footage of your home. You measured your place in God by how much you paid for your shoes and paid for your clothing. With the doctrine. I mean, people died left and right in the Word of Faith movement that should be alive today because they taught those people that if you have faith, you won't get sick. So people were sitting up in there sick with all kind of conditions, afraid to tell it because they knew if they said it, they wouldn't get sympathy, but that the saints would look down on. They were really, you must don't have faith. If you, what do you mean sitting there and you got high blood pressure? My God, if you, if you got faith, your faith would drive your pressure down. A man standing there telling you that with glasses on. <laughs> keep the hair dyed. How about faith to keep your hair black? We became materialistically driven and we, we began to define ourselves by these things and then that creates a spirit of entitlement. Yeah. Then we begin to label ourselves. I remember when these things came in. We went from being believers. Yeah. We, went, we went from being members of the holiness church. We, meant, we went from being holy rollers. We went from being sanctified to being kings kids 
I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of the king. And once you're convinced that you're a child of the king, oh, now, you, do you know the spirit of entitlement that accompanies that moniker? Oh, you're royalty now. Not spiritual, but now you're royalty. Uh, not, and I'm not, I'm, I'm, we all, we're all are spiritual royals in Christ, but listen, the way they applied it, now I'm, I'm, I'm above this. I'm above having to suffer to the point that now when suffering and persecutions and things of that sort come our way, we're surprised. We ask God, what have I done wrong? We say to the Lord, why is this happening to me? When just 40 years ago, that was not the case. Bad doctrine, improper preaching has made us a church full of softies. We whine, we cry, we mope, we grope. Oh, everything now is a press. And I'm talking about blessed people. Blessed people. My own people. Black folk complain now more than ever. And yet we're better off than we've ever been. Better off than we've ever been. Ever been. Ever been. I ain't never, I ain't never seen... Times as hard times like they are not. You really have it. You really have it. Go on back and ask the freedom fighters. Ask the people on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. You're right. Ask the folk that 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 that, that bull corner sick these dogs on. They'll tell you. They will tell you. No, you've never seen times like this. We 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 only imagined that it would get like it is now. And most of us never thought that it would get that in our lifetime. And now you have it, and all you do with it is complain. I'm going to preach in a minute. Ah, oh, it's different. But the doctrine of material prosperity and a sunny path through life. So let's believe that every day is supposed to be sunny. Oh, nothing is supposed to go wrong. You can look around and see wrong going on with everybody else. Nothing is supposed to go wrong. I mean, my car is never supposed to break down. Tires never supposed to go flat. Never mind that everybody else's car breaks down. Never mind that the busiest part of any dealership is the maintenance. They fix more than they sell. Because the car keeps breaking. It's almost an endless <laughs> every three months. Right back in there. Yes. Preach wouldn't. It has got us to the point where we actually do something that 1 Peter 4 and 12 says we're not to do. 1 Peter 4 and 12 says, Beloved, think it not strange. Concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. There's nothing wrong with God. There's something wrong with us. It's our thinking. We've gone the wrong way in our thinking. The truth is, I hate to tell you. Well, really, I don't. The truth is that this is indeed a suffering way. We suffer and will Amen. Be faced with persecutions, ostracisms, cults, social and religious persecutions. We may as well understand this. Let me go to my text. Acts chapter 14, preach, teach Sunday. I'm almost done. It came to pass, verse 1, and it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together. Unto into the synagogue of the Jews. And so spake that a great multitude of both Jews, uh, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks believed, 
Paul and uh, his traveling companions went, hallelujah, to him and Barnabas. They went to Iconium. And they went to the synagogue. And they preached so that both Hebraic and Hellenized Jews got saved. Praise the Lord. And the Bible teaches that a great number of them believed. Woo! You're talking about revival. What a move of God they had. But the unbelieving Jews, there's no hatred like religious hatred. These unbelieving Jews believed in Judaism. They didn't believe that Jesus was Lord. These unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles. And look at this. Look at the, what they did behind the scenes. And made their minds evil affected against the brethren. They put the brethren in a bad mood. They stirred up the people and put Paul and Barnabas in a bad light. Oh, yes. This uh, clandestine move to undermine the move of God. And look at verse 3. Long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord. Paul and Barnabas stayed there, and they kept preaching, and uh, uh, they spoke, listen, preachers, they preached boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted, look at this, God gave them signs and wonders to be done by their hands. As they preach, the, the miracles and the move of God kept the, the conspiracy at bay. So two things were going on simultaneously in the synagogue. There were Jews who were going uh, to Jew after Jew saying, we need to stop this. And there were other Jews who were saying, my God, thank God for Jesus. This is the best thing that ever happened. And the miracles kept the conspiracy at bay for a while. But then it came to its head. Everybody say showdown. The Bible says, verse 4, but the multitude of the city was divided. Part held with the Jews and part held with the apostles. So now we got a problem. The city is divided. The synagogue is divided. People who were saved were saved. And those who resisted, resisted. And so now it's time for the showdown. And the Bible says in verse 5, And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers, other words, they uh, got together and they came up with a plan, and this is the explosion. It all blows up now. And the, 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 the plan was to kill Paul, to kill Barnabas. Amen. The Jew, the Gentiles, Jews, and their rulers, they used them, look at this, to use them despitefully and to stone them. They talked them into insulting Paul, insulting Barnabas to work against them and not only to insult them and to persecute them and cause them to suffer, but to kill them. We need to stone these people. We need to get rid of them. What crime had they done? They preached the gospel with power and authority. There was a man standing over there healed who was sick before Paul and Barnabas came. There's a person over there delivered who was bound before Paul and Barnabas came. But as a result of the preaching of the gospel, all of these people were saved and healed. But how many know, let me tell you, not everybody's excited about the gospel. You may love this kind of preacher, but not everybody loves it. You may love the truth being told, but there are people who, who hate us because we tell the truth. They loathe what we say. And they're waiting. Oh, I'm just going to wait because I know sooner or later something will happen. They hate the gospel. But when Paul, they, they hated it, but Paul preached it anyhow. And thank God, verse 6 says, and they were aware of it. Somebody, by the help of God the Holy Spirit, got the word to Paul about this conspiracy that was going on. And look at this. You got to know when, saints. You got to know when discretion is the better part of valor. 
Instead of staying and fight, and, uh, and fight the Bible says, and they fled. <laughs> and aware of it, they fled unto Lystra and Derby, cities of Laconia, and in the region that lieth round about. But after they ran and got to those places, oh my, look at this. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't get to those places and retool. They didn't have a meeting to say what went wrong. They didn't uh, call a meeting and say, okay, we got we to gotta taper our message. The Bible says when they got to these new cities, the Bible says, and they preached the gospel. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, I hear so much of change your message. I hear so much of taper it down. I hear so much of do this and do that. Listen, the preacher must preach the gospel. God called us to preach the gospel. Yes. And if the gospel gets you in trouble and you have to run, wherever you stop, preach that. And if you, if you, if you have to leave that, wherever you stop, preach that. But preach the gospel. My, my. Paul was never afraid to preach the gospel. He preached the gospel in Athens. Athens was the intellectual capital of the world. And they mocked him for it. But he preached the gospel. He preached the gospel in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the religious capital of the world. Uh-huh. But even there, they mobbed him. But even there, he preached the gospel. He preached the gospel at Rome. And Rome was the political capital of the world. And he was martyred. But no matter what he did, no matter where he went, no matter what was done to him, as long as he lived, every time he got a chance, he preached the gospel. He didn't preach the gospel of, your, of the haters. He didn't preach the gospel of materialism. He didn't preach the gospel of compromise. He preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. He preached that Christ is the only savior, that Christ is God's hallelujah Messiah, that Jesus is coming again. And he warned them of the Antichrist and he said, be holy. Everywhere he went, he preached the gospel. Oh, look at how he suffered. They tried to kill him. They tried to kill him. He was on the run. And there, and look at this now. And verse 8, are you with me? And there said a certain man in Lystra. See, they left uh, Iconium, went 18 miles down the road to Lystra. And when they got there, they found a man there. Look how the Holy Spirit describes this man. The Holy Spirit gives us three adjectives, three descriptions. The Holy Spirit tells us, number one, he was impotent in his feet. Word that impotent means could not do. His feet would not work. Number two, being crippled from his mother's womb. He was that way all of his life. Number three, look at this, uh, who had never walked. That's bad. Impotent in his feet. Been that way all of his life. And had ne never, never walked. Oh, oh. And look at this. Thank God for Icon Iconium. Uh-huh. The same heard Paul preach. <laughs> who steadfastly beholding him. Now that, that probably, what, what I'm about to get, read about now, probably wouldn't happen uh, with most of you, with, with many of you today. Because I preach to you. I want to thank the Lord for Elder Wilson. You know, people watch the broadcast. And I tell you all, all the time, people ain't just looking at me. I get so many compliments on the way and he gets singled out. He pays attention Amen. while I'm preaching. Amen. I've had comments say, well, all of them get with you when you get high, but it's something about the laying the foundation. I appreciate that. I'm telling you, people look. And, uh, and I tell you, some of you know that people look, and that's why you try to send that stone face. God's going to get you. He's going he's to freeze you in that position. People are looking. People are looking. 
People are looking. Oh, I'm, I'm preaching good. And look at this now. The Bible says, uh, am I going too long? The Bible says right here, and does the same heard Paul preach? Who, speaking of Paul, steadfastly beholding him and perceived that he had faith to be him. It was something about the way the man paid attention. It was something about what Paul saw in his eyes when Paul looked at him. Some of you would never get healed because when the word is being preached, your expression does not say that you have faith to be healed. You got to give God something to work with. You got to give the preacher something to work with. Faith to be healed shows on your face. And when faith to be healed is missing, that shows also. Nobody can be faithful and faith-filled and look faithless. Let me tell you something. You don't get healed through pity. Sit there. I just hope Pastor noticed that I'm not myself in service and pray for me. No, I'm going to try my best not to look at you. That's right. I need, I need somebody to preach to. I, I need a good amen corner. Amen. amen. You, you, listen, you got to know how to play a role in your own deliverance. Well, I'm, 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 I'm going to sit here and see if he's going to preach. I'm going to see if he says something to move me. I don't care whether he get moved or not, but if you want to get delivered... If you want to get delivered, you got to give God something to work with. You want to walk in with your condition and walk out with it? Be my guest. But if you want to get delivered, there's a certain way. Oh my, that you ought to pay attention. Can I get a witness here? Can I get a witness? Bible says that uh, the, the, I wrote this down says so there was something about the way he looked and the way he listened that caused Paul to understand that this man had faith, not faith to get a touch, not faith to get better, not faith, amen, for uh, praise the Lord to get lifted up but here's a man whose feet had never worked. Here's a man who had never walked. Here's a man who was this way all of his life. And yet he did. He listened to the gospel. And he didn't have faith to be made to feel better. That man had faith to be healed. Oh! Uh, look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, do you have faith to be healed? My, my, some of us hadn't been healed because we don't believe for it. Bible said when they, he perceived that that man had faith to be healed, notice what it said, verse 10, and Paul said with a loud voice, stand up on thy feet. And notice what the man did. The man didn't think about it. The man didn't test his legs to see if they would work. The man, the, the, man, the Bible said, he leaped up without even thinking. He got up for the very first time. Somebody ought to praise the Lord in here. What a mighty God we serve. There is power. My God, he, he leaped up. Leaped up. Leaped up and started walking. Leaped up, leaped up and began to walk, praise the Lord. And the Bible says, and when the people saw it, because you know they saw it. When the people saw it, when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices and sang in the speech of the Laconia, in the speech, they said, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men and they call Barnabas Jupiter Jupiter was the father of the gods according to Greek mythology and Paul Mercurius 
Yes. Harmonies. Amen. He was the messenger of the gods. Because he was the chief speaker. Paul was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before the city, brought oxen and garland unto the gate and would have get done sacrifice. Oh, you think that what happened in Iconium was bad. You think the plot to kill them was bad. Satan then came with a higher level of suffering. There is no, no plan, no scheme that Satan has ever come up with that has been more successful at destroying preachers, missionaries, teachers, pastors, bishops, youth pastors, first ladies, missionaries, you name it, like the deification of people. We are too vulnerable to pray too vulnerable to being lifted. Let me tell you something. You, and this is for you, and I got three fingers pointing back at me, are not that wonderful. We're not that good. You got to know how to fight deification. Tone it down. Oh, I want to tell you to grab your neighbor's hand and squeeze it. Tone it down. That's a trick of Satan. That's a trick of Satan. Oh, it may not even be the devil. When someone else come up to you, somebody come to you and say, you're not that good. You're not a good preacher. That may be a, that may be a demon, but a little one. One of the ranking devils come up to you and say, you're the best preacher I ever heard. Oh, you're better than what you're doing right now. You're more than who and what you are right now. That kills preachers. That, 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 now that, that's the thing. See, the devil, the, notice how Satan comes at you. In one town, they try to stone him. In the next town, they try to make him God. We've got to beware of both extremes. Don't you let nobody kill you. And don't you let nobody make you God. Ain't nobody God but the God of the Bible. He's the wonderful one. He's the one who, who is indispensable. Let me, let me tell you something to sober us all up. When we die, only a handful of people will take notice. And we will have to pay the police to stop the traffic, to get our bodies to the graveyard. Because folk are just like you. When you see the funeral procession coming, oh, Lord, let me speed up. Let me speed up. Or some folk will pull over, if they pull over at all, until the hearse pass. Right. And the devil got many of us thinking that we're Mr. and Mrs. It. We're not. We're not. Deification. We're not. Deification. Deification. They've tried to deify these men. Now, now look at this. Look at this now. I told you to preach, teach Sunday. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back up and just a minute. But check this out. They have performed some miracle. Now, some of us get deified when we catch the cold out of somebody. Pastor, they were sneezing. Phew. Yeah. And I prayed for them and they stopped sneezing. Look how God is using me. Okay, well, you get an antihistamine and do the same thing. Same thing. But this was a real certified. Miracle. Impotent in his feet. 
from his mother's womb, having never walked. Seemed like a divine visit to me. It's either, the, either a divine visit or somebody's being used by the divine. And, and I heard John, when they talked to John, John said, now wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm not that light. That's right. No, 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 I come to bear witness of the light. Amen. And let me say this to preachers. Paul told the folk, now look, I planted, Apollo watereth, but God giveth the increase. And he said, and we're all God's husbandmen. But then he did send a message, though, to Apollos because some of the people were saying, I'm of Apollos. Apollos didn't start the church at Corinth. Apollos was not the leader. Paul sent him a message and said, let every man. He says, no foundations can be laid than that which is laid. Christ Jesus. He says, now let every man be careful how he build upon. Now there ought to be gracefulness and great and a degree of poise and respect when you are building on another man's foundation or speaking to another man's house. When I go, I'm going to preach the gospel, but those luminaries, yes, I'm not going to disrespect them. That's right. Because you have to be careful. You have to watch it. You have to know when you don't say certain things. Right. No lines. The Holy Ghost will give you lines that you don't cross. When those people began to deify Paul and Barnabas, they said, wait a minute. Look at this. They were getting ready to sacrifice to them. Verse 14. Which, when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they, look at this, look at this they rented their clothes. And they didn't walk, ran among the people. And they didn't whisper, crying. They were not even flattered. We're so easily flattered. Hey, the Rocky, who was that guy, Brown, that producer that time? Brown from New York. Were you with us then? Stanley Brown. Stanley Brown. Big time producer. Stanley Brown produced everybody. We, we were working with Stanley. And uh, uh, Stanley complimented a few uh, of the people. And, and after he complimented them, they thought that they were ready for a Grammy. So I had to go back to Stanley, and Stanley said this. I'll never forget. It stayed with me all these years. We, was at, we were at 2901. He said, Pastor, tell them to stop being so easily flattered. Don't be easily flattered. I'm going to let that sink in for a minute. I'm preaching hard. Don't be so easily flattered. The devil comes with flattery. I preached at one of my pastors. He's in heaven now, churches. And after I finished preaching, I'll never forget, somebody came up to me, wasn't here, with a lie from the pit of hell. And I recognized it, and I did not let that person greet me anymore after I preached again. He walked up to me and said, after I finished preaching, I'm standing there sweating, and oh, the Lord had used me. We had a wonderful time in the service. Oh, Elder Wooden, you preached just as good as the past. I looked at, you know what I saw when I looked at? I saw Satan, and I saw the destruction. Because no, number one, now, it was a lie. I can't preach good to the pastor. Nah, it was a lie. It's a lie. The, 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 the servant is never greater than the master. You, you never get better than who taught you. You might do good. Amen. Don't, don't, hey, don't, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Those who marched for our freedoms will always be greater than those of us who are enjoying the freedoms. Them civil rights icons, they did it. And look at what we've done with it. Walking around our pants hanging off our rear ends. Tattoos everywhere. Speaking Ebonics. Won't half go to school. And until Obama came, wouldn't vote. I got to hurry up. I got to, I'm spending too much time on this. I'm spending too much time. But I'm trying to tell So they ran down. 
They ran down and they stopped them. They cried. They said, sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein who in times past suffered nations to walk in their own ways. My God, God's patience is beyond comprehension. But nevertheless, verse 17, he left not himself without witness in that he did good and he gave us rain from heaven and fruit uh, fruitful seasons filling our hearts with good, with food and gladness. And with these things, with these things, they work, they work with these things, scarcely restrain they, the people. They stopped this idolatry. They stopped this human deification. They stopped these people from sacrificing unto them. Now watch, watch. And there came uh, certain Jews from Antioch. I'm almost through now. This is a good lesson. Antioch, a hundred miles away. Here they come. <sighs> Some people don't have anything to do but to follow you and fight you. All the way from Antioch and Iconium, 18 miles away. So who, look at this, persuaded the people. And having stone Paul. Now these are the people who just want to make him a god. Who said, we're going to worship you. The Jew from Antioch. I mean, look, it's one thing to, to uh, stop him from worshiping you. For them to go from wanting to worship you to wanting to kill you. Woo! This is why, this is why you can't live by the amen. And you can't die. Because you, you, if you live by them, you'll die by them. If you live by the appointments, you'll die when there aren't any. Nobody stays hot all the time. All right, the, door, Lord, the Lord opened the door. You got a few appointments. Take them and be faithful. Be grateful. But now you, you're not going to live on the road. You're coming back. If you stayed hot all the time, you'd burn up. Amen. Ask these NFL players. They'll tell you. We thought when we got to the Super Bowl that we would get, it would be like this all the time. Some of them realize they never get back. Some of them spent their whole careers and never got to a championship game. Some things are hard and they're rare. And you got to know how to handle your ups and handle your downs. And these people, are you with me? These people went from wanting to worship them to trying to kill them. And, and you know, you know, you would think in human thinking that if they would not receive deification, that God would honor their not receiving deification by at least protecting them. And letting no harm come their way. Instead, the same Paul who refused deification was stoned. Now they tried to stone him and I caught him. They got him in Lystra and stoned him and left him for dead and drug his body outside of the city and Dropped it all. Some theologians argue that they killed him. And the reason they argue that they killed him is the word that Luke uses when he says, but he rose up. A, a word used 111 times in the New Testament dealing with uh, uh, being resurrected some 30 some odd times. It, it means being resurrected from the dead. And wow, now here's the man who wouldn't let him deify. See, what, what am I teaching you now? Sometimes, even when you do right, you still, it's still a suffering way. So don't have your lips stuck out. Well, I've been serving the Lord, and I've been doing this, and I've been serving in the church, and I've been living holy. I don't know why God let this happen to me. He let it happen to Paul. If it could happen to Paul, it could happen to you. It could happen to me. 
And you know what the truth is? It happens. You know, people say no good deed go unpunished. Sometimes when you've done right, your feelings get hurt. Sometimes, praise the Lord, sometimes parents know this and kids know it. Sometimes the child who does the least get the most praise. Sometimes the child who do, does the most get the most criticism. Life is that way. Sometimes when you've done all you know to do, you get no thanks at all. It's that way. This is a suffering way. But I'm glad that the devil can't kill you until God gets ready to take you home. For a while laying there, Left for dead. Let's go home, Rocky. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that the disciples stood around the body. They were standing there looking at his bloodied body as he'd been stoned and stoned. Mm -hmm. I can imagine he was swollen and cut. Praise the Lord and blooded because they thought he was dead. But how many know that our God is a miracle worker? Oh, Lord. And many times as a believer, you may be down for the count, but that don't mean that you're down and out. And uh, Paul, the Bible says, he arose. While they were sitting there trying to plan his funeral, he got up and said, not yet. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, when he got up, he got up with his courage. He got up with his strength. Because notice when he arose, he came into the city. He turned around and went right back. Good God Almighty into the city of Lystra saying y'all thought you killed me but I'm not dead I've still got life in my body and he went in there and he let him keep him for just one day now surely you would think that after he had been stoned and left for dead that Paul would say I've had enough I've had enough enough I've been hit hard enough I've been down I've been hurt I'm through but instead of going home instead of giving in instead of saying I'm coming in off the road the Bible said and the next day he departed and went to Derby he went another 18 miles or so and when he and when they had preached the gospel in that city when he got to Derby he didn't shut his mouth but he preached again he began to cry out and tell the saints in Derby he preached to them and he taught them and he told them that they got to be saved and then after preaching there guess what he did he didn't go home but he turned around and went right back to Lystra he went right back to Iconium he went right back to Antioch confirming the souls and, and telling the people that you got to continue in the faith and that we must through tribulation enter into the kingdom of God what a mighty man I wonder today is there anybody here who's just determined that come trouble come high water come any attack that you're going to stand on the word of God that you're going to preach anyhow that you're going to live it regardless of what you ought to ask God today give me the courage give me the stamina give me the guts give me the intestinal fortitude that the apostle had give me power to endure suffering power to endure whatever I run into and to get back on my feet and to cry loud and spare not tell the world that
God, holiness is still right. Tell the world that Jesus is still the only Savior. Tell the world, yes, I've been down, but the Lord raised me up. I'm back on my feet. It didn't take me long to recover. Just 24 hours later, Paul said, Barnabas, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's preach some more. Let's win some souls. Let's praise the Lord. Do I have anybody who wants to do it again? You want to take another stab at it? Can't wait to get back to the clinic. Can't wait to get back to the homeless shelter. Can't wait. Can't wait. Because there's something on the inside that tells me to do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Yes, sir. This is a suffering way. You're gonna go through. The, you're gonna go through some things if you're gonna make it in this. But if you go through, you'll come out as pure gold. All this happened on Paul's first missionary journey. That is recorded in the Book of Acts three. It is argued that it had much more than that. But the Acts of the Apostle gives us three missionary journeys. On the first one, they tried to kill him. They tried to make him God. They stoned him and left him for dead. He got up. Hallelujah. And went right back to preaching. He got up and he told the people, said, what happened to me? I want to tell you, continue in the faith. And he says, just like they got me, you through much tribulation is going to enter into the kingdom. So when the devil comes against you, this is helping somebody who's under attack now. When the enemy comes against you, don't think it's strange. Don't think it's odd. Whatever you do, don't, don't fail to continue in the faith because that's the way it is. Bad theology has made us to think that we shouldn't suffer anything. So then, then you find, you find that there is uh, something wrong with your child. You find that that business deal that just couldn't miss, missed. You find that there's something in your body. You find that friends and people who you thought you could turn on, turn on you. You find that things happen. What do you do? You keep going. You keep striving. You keep pressing through. And you shrug your shoulders and you say to yourself, this is a suffering way. Amen. There's no way around it. This road is filled with disappointments. This road is filled with setbacks, challenging times. But the Lord knows how. The Lord knows how. The Lord knows how to see you through. Paul never lost his joy. Paul never lost his fervor. And when he went to the next town, isn't that something? Going, reviewing the saints. Going to find those who, he, who had already won. So I just want to confirm you. And I want to tell you, I have not changed my doctrine. In case y'all heard about what they did to me, Paul says, I just want y'all to know, I'm still preaching the same stuff. I'm still saying, stay in the faith. I'm not discouraged about that. I hadn't resigned from anything. I'm not quitting. I'm saying the same thing that I was saying before they tried to deify me, before they tried to kill me, and, when, and before they stoned me and left me for dead. I'm saying the same thing. And, but let me just add this. And you too, through much tribulation, through much persecution, you will have to press into the kingdom. You're going to enter in, but it ain't no cakewalk. My pastor saved me 
I went to Elder Turner one time. I said, Elder Turner, I've been reading about the book of, I've been reading from the book of Job, and I've been reading the things that Job went through, and I noticed that I haven't suffered any of those things, so I'm praying that God let me go through. Uh, at least I wanted to go through. And my pastor said to me, what a brilliant man. I say this often. All this dialogue that's needed today, I'm not accustomed to that. When you serve your leader, they tell you what they got to tell you, they go on. Four days later, we still talk about the same thing. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't good at that. Because as, as with my authority, when I tell you what I got to tell you, I've told you. That's right. I ain't going to keep telling you. At that point, you're either going to do what I say or you're not. I mean, you're, you're growing. You do what you want to. He looked at me and said, son, young man, I don't know. He probably didn't look at me that day. I was riding in the back seat of his car. <laughs> young man, do you want your wife to die? I said, no. <laughs> your daughter, Krista, um, Patrick wasn't born yet. You want your child? Just both of them were here. You want your children to die? No, sir. You want your mama to die? <laughs> no. See, because, you know, he's so annoying. I'm wondering why he asked me these questions, because... <laughs> Yeah, because you know, if I turn to you, they get ready to die. You know, go, go call the funeral home. I said, no. You want this? You want, do you want to get sick in your body? And during that time, man, I was just heavy in the lifting weights. During that time, I could pick up the side of a small car. Okay, wouldn't try it now for nothing in this world. But I, but I had power like that at one time. I did it on a Sunday morning. Check it. I jacked the tires off the car one day. The, 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 the front tire came up. I told the pastor about it. You know what he told me? Young man, said, yes, sir, you ought to be fasting. <laughs> and you know what it was? It was a lesson in priorities. Say, so, because you, you're not going to be, you're not, you, 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 God, in the future, you ain't going to be lifting cars. See, he saw the future. Your future is preaching the gospel. So ain't no point in trying to lift no car. That's a waste of time. Trying to build that power. You know how much you got to eat to keep that kind of power? You eat 3,000 calories a day. And if I would have stayed on that, 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 that track, I'd probably be dead now because my heart would have exploded. But anyway, he said, do you want your family? You want this and that? You want to lose your health? No, sir. Do you want to, you want to lose everything you got? No, sir. He said, well, then you don't want what happened to Joe. He said, you'll suffer. You'll go through. You have to pray for it. You have to ask for it. It's coming. Woo, he preached. My God. He preached. He helped me. He saved me. He preached because it has come. It came. And it will come again. It's par for the course. It's the way it is. And it, and it will be that way. What prayer can I pray to take the suffering away? There's no such prayer. What confession? I will tell the word of faith. There's no formula. This is my Bible. It, I can do what it says I can do. I am what, put, confess all you want. To. There is no formula. There is no formula that keeps the believer from suffering persecution. There is no formula that keeps sickness away indefinitely. Well, I'm walking in divine faith, healing. All of them walk in divine healing until they, 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 until they get sick. Everybody, everybody's divinely healed until you're not. Then what? You're just like everybody else sitting right over there in that doctor's office waiting for him to call your name. Go on in there with your divine self. I ain't gonna die till I get ready, folk, at your funeral. I wonder whether they're ready. I wonder what she's ready. Looking at you. I wonder where they're ready. There's nowhere around certain things. I'm, I'm preaching to you. And if you are going through some things, you're enduring, you're enduring some persecution. 
I want to give you a word of advice and I want to pray for you. I'm done. Word of advice. Stay with the Lord. Continue in the faith. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Keep serving. Keep serving. So you can't quit till the storm is past. Then here you come ready to testify. Don't nobody want to hear you. You got to go through. You got to go through it. You got to go through it. You got to, you got to go through it. And you got to go through it like, acting like you don't have anything. Like acting like you're not going through anything. That's, how, that's what you have to do. You have to go through it. So that's, that's faking. That's what secularism has taught you. What we now call faking, we used to call faith. Bible says when you fast, say don't let your mouth be white. Says make sure your head lack no oil. So the Bible says that you don't appear to be fasting. Elisha asked the woman, says, how is everything? She said, everything's well. All is well. Child was dead. All is well. You got to know how to go through. Don't nobody want to hear that all the time. The only person who can hear that stuff all the time and it don't get them is God. Humans have their limits. So go through. And if, and, if, and if you're going through and it's heavy on you, meet me at the altar. I want to pray for you that God gives you enduring power. Come quickly, Lord. Help me to hold out. Mm, Lord, help me to hold out. Mm, sing and Lord, help me.
sing with us. Everybody. 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 Everybody sing. Everybody pray. Everybody sing. Help me. The load is a little heavy. The road is a little rough. I'm a little discouraged now. I need you. I need your hand. Oh, Lord, I need your help, Lord. Lift your hands on the altar. I'm looking to see if I see people who have faith to be healed. I can't do it for you. Sometimes we wear ourselves out praying for people and we have more faith in their being healed than they have faith. I'm pulling on you and you don't believe. Come on, sister. Believe him, believe him, believe him. And you, you're, you're looking like, well, I don't know. It won't happen. But if you believe God, where's the oil? The Lord will. The Lord will do it. He'll do it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going, I'm, 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 I want to pray, but I want to minister just for a minute. In the name of Jesus. Oh my, I anoint you, sister. a liar. Let me tell y'all something. This is not pertaining to this young lady, but I want to tell you something. They got a movie out now, a series uh, about this uh, suicide. Um, uh, this girl, she kills herself. The way the movie is it Netflix? Where is it? Netflix. What's the name of Don? You know? Thirteen Reasons Why. Let me tell you. Let me tell y'all something. This is. That's the most evil, uh, deceptive movie ever made because it preys on the stupid. Because here's what they don't tell you in the movie. And I know y'all feel bad when I use words like stupid. You know why I do that? See, I, want you to, I don't want you to think doing stupid things uh, are intelligent. I don't want you to think. I don't want you to think that there's an upside to this, because you don't want me to preach your funeral if you do that. It's going to be a short eulogy. I want to take a text tonight. Stupid. She took her own life. Now let me tell you all this. Here's how the movie deceive you. They don't tell the people, and there has been an uptick in suicides with teens for watching the movie. Here's what they don't tell them. You won't be around after you kill yourself to see the effects of what you've done on people. You won't be the invisible narrator telling the story and you see this person, you got you, 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 you acted out, you enacted your vengeance on this one and this one is crying and that one feels bad and this other person and you are uh, uh, an invisible spirit looking at what the, the, the after effects of what you did. No, you won't, that ain't the way it works. You will be in hell crying, right. with screaming out with no conscience of what's going on here. So things like that, things like that, don't even let movies like that, don't even watch them, don't even get into that stuff. 
Man, just let that go because they, it's, it's designed to deceive you. It's designed to fool you and make you think, oh, you can, you can show them. You're going to kill yourself. Uh, look at mama and I. Mama cry. I should have been up there. That mother. If she does cry, that, you'll never be there to see it because you're gone to hell. Not to a better place. Not out of your misery. Not they're peaceful now. That's mortuary science. Mm -hmm. That's, right. That's what you look at. Mortuary science. They know how. We got all kinds of colors, right. makeup, lipstick, wigs, mm -hmm. outfits, glue, yes, strings, everything to make you look like you That's are right. at peace. You are gone. Yes, and that will be true for everybody. Yeah. So don't you fall for that. So I rebuke that spirit. Yeah. I rebuke that spirit. I rebuke that spirit. I rebuke that spirit of deception. I rebuke it right now. This attempt to fool young people and to make them think that there's somehow uh, an upside, somehow vengeance is, is given by taking your own life. The devil is a liar. Now, Father, I pray for the saints on this altar. God, here we are. We're going through, Lord. But, Father, give us strength to hold out. Give us strength, oh God, to stand the test. Give us strength, oh God, to stand on your word. In the name of Jesus, you're our God and you're our keeper. You're the lifter of our head. And Father, right now, we ask, oh God, that you break every yoke. We ask, oh God, that you move by your spirit. We ask, oh God, that you save, heal, and deliver. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we're going to serve you, Lord. We're going to serve you. We're going to serve you. Hallelujah. We're going to serve you through our persecutions. We're going to serve you through our tribulations. We're going to serve you, Jesus, through our hard times. We're going to serve you in the name of Jesus because you're our God, you're our King, you're our Lord. And we give you praise right now. We're just like Paul. We're just like Paul. We will glorify you and we won't be deified. We're just like Paul. We're going to serve you when they're trying to stone us. We're going to serve you no matter what. In the name of Jesus, we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And Jesus, Jesus, right now, Lord, do it, Lord. Do it for your glory. Do it for your honor. Do it in the church. Do it in our hearts. Do it in our souls. Do it in our minds. Do it, do it, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on. Cry out to him on the altar. Cry out to him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. How many have faith today? How many believe him today? How many know he's worthy? How many know he's God? How many know he's able? Yeah! Yes, Lord. Praise him on the altar. 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 Hallelujah. Man of God, now Lord, we just thank you for everything. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to stay in this suffering way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many are determined to stay in this suffering way?
Glory to God. And in it being a suffering way, it doesn't mean you suffer all the time. Because you know there's more joy than there is sorrow. There's more ups than there are downs. But you got to know how to handle your downs. You got to know how to handle them. You run into a season where times are tough. You can't all of a sudden now quit and get all discouraged. Amen. And acting like you don't you didn't think that anything like this would ever happen to you. So I didn't think this would happen to me, preacher. I asked you, well, why? Who are you? It happens all over the world. Serve him, young man. You're doing a great job. Uh, I said to the guys uh, at the afternoon's crusade, what a night it was. Friday night when I saw young um, Isaac here. I saw many beautiful things during the crusade. When I saw this young man walk up to us after service, back straight, carrying himself like a Christian young man. When I spoke to him, all of that, hey, hey, all that kind of stuff, gone. Not trying to be gangster, not trying to be street, a man. Back street. Yes, sir. Look me in the eye. Articulate. Brother, let me tell you. I, 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 I drove off. I told the guys. I said, that's the power Hallelujah. of the gospel. Hallelujah. Stay with God. Amen. Because for your growth, for your growth, you'll grow and the enemy will come and try to hit you to discourage you. Can't let him do it. Can't let him do it. Got to stay on the road. Remember, Paul confirmed him and told them, number one, abide in the faith. And then he says, and know that with much tribulation, much persecution, you enter into the kingdom. And no one is excluded. Stay with the Lord. War for your mind, baby. War for your mind. Satan, I tell you what happens. You know, Satan has a assigned a, a spirit to you. And it's designed to depress you. Oh my. Now the problem is uh, you cooperate with it too much. So you got to quit that. You got to. I I'm going to tell you when that spirit's going to leave you and not come back. When you get mad with it. And tell it off in Jesus' name. And say, I'm going to live and not going to die. And when you settle that, that's the end of it. It'll go find someone else who don't have a pastor to tell them. If you listen, you put an end to this one quick. See, because you've been winning all the time. Say, so, but Pastor, out of all the times I've gone through and now everything that's happened, how can you say I'm winning? Because you're here. <laughs> Because you're here. Uh, spirits of depression are never out to depress you. They ain't what they have to do. Spirits of depression are out to kill you. They, they, you, they employ depression. But their goal is to kill you. And your purpose in your heart, I'm just, no, uh -uh, no not me, no. Celia, no, just can't. Whatever the attack is, just can't. No, this is just the way it is. I'm going through this. I'm come out on the other side. Victorious. God bless everyone of you.